Halloween is directed by John Carpenter. This is a horror thriller slasher film. Halloween stars Donald Pleasant as Dr. Samuel Loomis, Jamie Lee Curtis as Lori Strode, Nancy Loomis as Annie Brackett, Charles Cyphers as Sheriff Lee Brackett, PJ Souls as Linda Vanderclock, John Michael Graham as Bob Sims, Nancy Stevens as Nurse Marion Chambers, and Nick Castle as Michael Myers The Shape. This movie is rated R for violence, sex, drug and alcohol use, as well as language. This is not a movie for young children, I would say 18 years of age and older. The film has a runtime of 1 hour and 31 minutes. Halloween was released in theaters in the United States on Friday, October 27th, 1978. On Halloween night in 1963, while his parents are away, six-year-old Michael Audrey Myers took a really big sharp kitchen knife and murdered his older teenage sister Judith Myers. Fifteen years later, an adult 21-year-old Michael Myers escapes the mental hospital prison Smith's Grove Warren County Sanitarium on the night of October 30th, where he has been since the murder of his sister. He escapes in the car his doctor, Dr. Samuel Loomis and Nurse Marion Chambers were riding in while coming to the sanitarium. The next day is Tuesday, October 31st, 1978, Halloween. Michael travels back to his hometown of Haddonfield, Illinois, where he begins to stalk a young group of teenage girls most of the day, but one he is fixated on, 17-year-old Lori Strode. He stalks her at various times throughout the day, which is starting to put her on edge. Fearing what is going to happen since his escape, Dr. Samuel Loomis travels to Haddonfield and enlists the help of the town sheriff, Lee Brackett. Both of the men team up to try and find Michael before his killing spree begins. As the night approaches, kids are out trick-or-treating and teenagers are out having some naked fun. Lori Strode goes to a babysitting job where she babysits a young boy named Tommy Doyle and her friend, Annie Brackett, who is the sheriff's daughter, is at the house across the street babysitting little Lindsay Wallace. Annie forces Lori to keep Lindsay while she goes out to pick up Paul, her boyfriend. It is then that Michael Myers' killing spree begins where he kills Annie in her car by strangling her first and then stabbing her. Linda, who is friends with Annie and Lori, comes to Lindsay Wallace's house to have fun and make love. After Linda and Bob have a round of sexual intercourse, Bob goes downstairs to get a beer. Michael comes out of a hiding place in the dark house, scaring Paul and stabbing him through his body, pinning him to the wall. Michael goes upstairs to where Linda is, wearing a white sheet, and he is pretending to be a ghost. He kills Linda by strangling her with the telephone cord. After killing three teenagers, Michael sets up a trap for Lori in Lindsay's house. Loomis is down the street at the Myers house waiting for Michael until he sees his car from the previous night that Michael stole and starts patrolling the neighborhood looking for Michael. Lori goes over to the Wallace house to investigate, thinking this is all a huge prank by her friends. When she gets there, she is surprised by what she finds, and she is then attacked by Michael, who slashes her upper left arm open, and she hurts her leg and ankle. She makes it out of the house and back to Tommy's house, where she first secures the kids, and Michael makes his way into the house, and she is attacked downstairs. She uses a huge knitting needle and stabs Michael in the neck with it. Thinking she has killed him, she goes upstairs to check on the kids. Michael is still alive and makes his way upstairs and sees Lori and the kids in the hallway. She secures the kids again and then is attacked by Michael again in Tommy's parents' bedroom closet. She is able to fend off Michael using a coat hanger and jabs it into his left eye, which hurts his eye. As he grabs his eye, he drops the knife inside the closet and Lori reaches for it and picks it up and stabs him in the stomach with it. He falls back on his back to the ground outside the closet door. Lori gets Tommy and Lindsay out of the house to safety. Dr. Loomis is still patrolling the street and sees Tommy and Lindsay coming out of the house screaming, running in fear. Dr. Loomis starts making his way towards the house that they came out of. Michael gets up again and attacks Lori again a fourth time by trying to strangle her with his hands around her neck. But this time Loomis finds them in a struggle and shoots Michael six times in the heart knocking him off the second story balcony of the house. After Loomis checks on Lori to make sure she is okay, he then goes and looks off the balcony to find Michael's body is nowhere to be found. Okay, that is the story synopsis for John Carpenter's Halloween. Here are my negatives for the film. There are a few shots in this film where we see palm trees, which is not really noticeable unless you're really looking for them. Though since this film is set in the Midwest in Illinois, 
we are not supposed to see palm trees. The only reason we see them is because this film was shot on location in Pasadena, California. I didn't notice these palm trees and just probably until five or six years ago uh, when they were pointed out to me by a friend and I was like, oh, I never noticed those. But upon watching it now, I see them, but it doesn't really bother me. I'm just kind of like, okay, you know, whatever. There's palm, there's a few palm trees in Illinois. So what? <laughs> it doesn't take me out of the film at all. There's a scene in the film where the boy Tommy Doyle is trying to scare Lindsay as he hides behind a window curtain in his house. And when he turns around, he looks out the window and sees the shape Michael Myers carrying Annie's dead body inside Lindsay's house. And it scares him and he starts yelling that he saw the boogeyman and it scares Lindsay and annoys Lori. Now, I can't blame Lori for being annoyed at him, even though he is telling the truth. But when he is yelling, his voice is really irritating and annoying when he's doing that. I mean, it's almost like nails on a chalkboard. You're just like, dude, kid, shut up. So, yeah, that always kind of bothered me just because his voice is just like annoying at that point in time in the movie. During the scene where Annie and Lori pull up to the hardware store that has been robbed, we see police officers there and hear the store's alarm going off. So my question is this, if Michael got all his stuff, such as the Halloween mask, the rope, the knives, early that morning, why is the store's security alarm just now going off? Or has it been going off all day and they're just now responding to it? Also, why did Annie feel like she had to stop and talk to her dad at the hardware store when she and Lori were on their way to the babysitting jobs? And also, they were smoking weed in the car. <laughs> I wouldn't have stopped. <laughs> Why didn't she just drive on by and just not stop? And it looks to me like that Sheriff Brackett wouldn't have been able to talk to them anyway because he's busy dealing with an active crime scene. At the beginning of the movie, in the official use only station wagon that Dr. Loomis and Nurse Marion Chambers are in, we see a red colored matchbook that says Rabbit in Red. We then see it later when Loomis stumbles onto the tow truck driver that Michael killed and stole his jumpsuit, but nothing ever comes of the rabbit and red matchbook, but the movie focuses on it twice like it's going to be something of major importance, but nothing ever comes of it. And that always had me wondering, well, if nothing's ever going to come of it, why did the film focus on it twice? So that was just something that bothered me as well with this film. Okay, so those are my negatives. Here are my positives for the film. A great original story by John Carpenter and Deborah Hill that they came up with. I mean, it's flawless. It was originally titled The Babysitter Murders, but they wanted to set it around a certain theme and they chose Halloween. And that was great. It's sort of a slow burn, but the suspense and eeriness it gives off makes it so it doesn't feel like it's moving slow. The characters in this film are strong and well built up. Even though the character of Lori is sort of the smart bookworm of the group, she is not all about going out to parties and making out with guys or smoking weed all the time like the other girls. Now, granted, she does smoke weed because we see it, but she probably doesn't do it all the time. She knows that something weird is going on and she uses her intelligence to her advantage and she's able to figure out what is really going on while the others are making love and having sex and dying. The character of Dr. Sam Loomis is all about stopping Michael Myers by any means necessary and his goal is to shoot his patient, Michael Myers, and kill him. The way Donald Pleasance brought him to life and made him, in a sense, a man on a mission was great. It was this movie's version of Captain Ahab going after the white whale and the execution of that was awesome. Tommy Doyle is just a kid and like Loomis, he already knows something bad or someone bad the boogeyman is out there waiting to strike, but no one believes him because he's just a kid. The characters of Annie and Linda are just all about having fun and getting laid. This film really gives off that Halloween feel. The look of the film is great, even though it was shot in Pasadena, California. They make it look and feel like a small Midwestern town. They used painted leaves around the exterior sets to help give it that fall look. The look of the film is great. It's not overly saturated with color, but it is not completely muted without color. It is the right mix of both, which give the film that sort of fall autumn look. Plus the trees blowing in the nighttime wind was a nice touch of fall and autumn as well. 
The use of bluish lighting during the nighttime scenes is great as well, which is another positive and gives the film a more ominous look during those nighttime scenes. This cinematography by Dean Cundy is awesome looking. He shoots this film beautifully and the shots and lighting all blended together make this film gorgeous to look at. Plus the use of the Panavision Panaglide camera during the opening shots are great. The Panaglide is especially used during the POV shots at the beginning of the film where we're following Michael throughout the house. Uh, <clears throat> you know, you feel like you are in this character's head or with this character at the very beginning as we follow him across the street and into the house going into the kitchen grabbing the butcher knife and then going up the stairs and putting on the clown mask to the moment he stabs his sister and then goes downstairs and out of the house until the mask is pulled off by his parents who are just now arriving back home i mean wow great stuff finally there's the score music composed and conducted by director john carpenter himself i mean what a score it was and not just the main theme but all of it the theme though it is spooky and scary it is downright epic this score is right up there with other famous scores such as star wars superman indiana jones jaws the dark knight trilogy titanic and a lot of others as well. This score, but in particular, the Halloween main theme is the stuff of legend. The opening credit to the film, along with the main theme music and the lit up jack-o'-lantern is amazing and yet so terrifyingly creepy, but it really puts you in the mood for this film and sets the tone for the next hour and a half. Those are all my positives, now it's grading time. I'm going to give the 1978 iconic horror classic film, John Carpenter's Halloween, a well-deserved A+. Plus. Halloween is the night he came home. Is Halloween a perfect movie? No. Does it have its issues and screw-ups? Yes. But it is so well put together with everything, from the story, to the casting, to the characters, to the music, to the cinematography, that you just can't help but fall in love with this movie. This is my second favorite horror film, with the first being The Exorcist. This film is beautiful to look at. I own this movie on DVD, but I hope to get it soon on Blu-ray or 4K Blu-ray. I love this movie so much and I have so much respect for it that I can watch it any time of day at any time during the year, not just on Halloween. Okay, so I'm going to say thank you so much for watching. I'm going to say good night, God bless, I love all of you, and I will see you all in the next video, and happy Halloween. I met him 15 years ago. I, I was told there was nothing left, no reason. No uh, conscience, no understanding, and even the most rudimentary sense of life or death, of, of good or evil, of right or wrong. I met this six-year-old child with this blank, pale, emotionless face and the blackest eyes, the devil's eyes. I spent eight years trying to reach him and then another seven trying to keep him locked up because I realized that what was living behind that boy's eyes was purely and simply evil.